friends and felines and welcome back to my channel or if you're venturing my channel for the first time today hi hello and welcome don't forget to that subscribe button before you leave but here in western new york we had our first official snowstorm of the year in mid-november it was actually what eight years ago like this same time of the year in november where we had another crazy snowstorm so just something about like this weekend that just likes to dump snow on us um, Buffalo got most of it. Orchard Park got, I think they're up to 77 inches now, which is a lot. So they moved the Bills game to Detroit again, like they did in 2014. Um, so yeah, it's officially time to put up Christmas decorations. Normally I wait until Black Friday to put up decorations, but it has snowed. I got the okay from the fiance, so Christmas decor is up. I already have my backdrop all set up and ready to go. And then after I'm done filming, I'm gonna decorate the rest of the house and I'm so excited. Also, you might notice that I got my hair done. I experienced my first curly cut ever and it was life-changing. Um, I can go into more detail about that later. So it's a little kind of crazy because I slept on it and I have like, you know, the dye around my forehead. But again, we'll get into that later. Today's video though, it's gonna be a first impressions kind of video, trying some new makeup or just sharing my opinions on some new makeup to you guys. Maybe I've had some of this stuff for a little bit and I haven't really like shared my thoughts and opinions on it. But the main highlight of the makeup video today is that I got the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. Yeah, I saw this and I was like, oh my god, this is so cute, it's expensive, but I got it on the last day of the Sephora sale, so I was able to save a little bit of money on this. So I'm going to definitely give my full impression of this as well as some other new products, so if that's something that interests you, then definitely keep on watching. So the sun is shining even though there's like... I don't know how many inches of snow we got, maybe six inches of snow. And I'm wearing this like cute, like springy shirt. We're going with like the pinky green vibes to match the color scheme of the palette, which is not really wintry at all, but that's what we're going for today. All right, to start off with primer, I do have a new primer from RMS Beauty. This is the Re-Evolve Radiance Locking Primer. I'm pretty sure I got this as a little sample when I bought something else from Sephora and I have not used it yet. So we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. Um, this just says this clean powered primer locks in skincare and grips makeup all day. So we will see about that. I forget if RMS Beauty is like an influencer or a celebrities brand or not. I don't really remember, but we are going to try this today. Mm, I'm burning like the first winter candle of the year too, and it's the um, sugar snickerdoodle cookie one. Oh my god, it smells like freshly baked snickerdoodles. Not even kidding. It's not even like that artificial scent, it's like, it actually smells like cookies. Speaking of the primer scent, I think there's a little bit of a scent, but I can't really tell. It's definitely not like overpowering. Yeah, there's definitely a scent, but it's not too bad. I really don't know what the objective of this primer is. It says it's a radiance locking primer, so I don't know if it's supposed to like give a glow to your skin. I don't think this is obviously going to be a mattifying primer. I think my driveway is being plowed out right now, so if you guys hear noises in the background, that's what that is. But looking up close at the primer, it might have blurred a little bit, definitely not mattifying. And it does have a little bit of a glow, but not anything like too crazy. And it does feel like a little tacky. So we'll see how it um, holds up underneath foundation. Speaking of foundation, I don't have any new ones to try. There are some on my wish list, but it's just not in the budget right now. So I'm just gonna go, and, uh, go ahead and use my Tom Ford foundation because I wanna use this up because it was very expensive, although I did not buy it and I don't want it to get expired. And then I'm gonna use my NARS Creamy Concealer and then we'll go in with some other newer products. Okay, here's what the base makeup is looking like. Now this isn't a first impression, but I do think I did a video review of the Tom Ford foundation. Spoiler alert, it's not worth it. I used it again today and I feel like it's just not giving like I remember it giving before. Um, and it doesn't like really build up. So like where my red cheeks are poking through, I try to build up a little bit and it wasn't really doing much or it would kind of like take away the foundation. Um, so then I went in with the NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer and that helped a little bit. So I put some on my jawline, underneath my eyes and my nose to give a little bit more coverage. But yeah, the Tom Ford one, it's really just not slaying. 
So before we go into powder, I do have a new cream contour finally to try out. I've been having a few on my list, like the Rare Beauty one, like this LYS one, but they have been sold out in my shade. So this is the LYS Beauty. Never tried anything from this brand, I don't think. This is the No Limits Cream Contour Stick in the shade Motivate, which is for light skin tones. Okay, well, this packaging is stupid because it's hard to open without ripping it. All right, here's the packaging, nicely chrome, gonna be prone to fingerprints. And it's in a triangle shape. And that's what that looks like. All right, so hopefully this shade will work. We're gonna just put it on here. This is like weird because it's like a triangle. Okay, I'm gonna start with that much and I'm gonna use this Billion Dollar Brows Contour Brush to hopefully blend that out. Now this isn't like a super dense brush, but this is like actually blending it out like super nice. But this undertone seems like it's giving like yellow. <laughs> um, definitely not like the Makeup by Mario stick, so I don't know about this shade. And there wasn't too many shades, I don't think, on the website. Um, because I think like the next shade up would have been too dark for me, but it definitely blends out very, very easily. It's not patchy and just kind of like melts into the skin. So that's a good plus, but I don't know about this color though. And then here I go like, you know, contouring around my forehead where I have uh, hair dye still. <laughs> wow, it does really like melt into the skin. Like that's actually really shocking, but yeah, I don't know about this color though just sad because I really do like how it like melts in. Also I don't know if this contour shade will work with like the foundation because the foundation is a little bit lighter so that also might be part of it. But it's just giving yellow. I don't know can you guys like see the color at all? It's like not great. So here's Makeup by Mario. It's a little bit deeper but it blends out really nicely and it's definitely more cool toned and then this light shade it's just it's yellow. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of contouring on my chin though. I think that works for like chin contour because I think it actually like the tone works a little bit more where it it's not like a really deep dark contour. I don't know. It's hard to do like a before and after when I did both sides. All right so now we're gonna move on to blush because I also have a cream blush along the same tone as being like a stick. This is the Nude Sticks Nudies Matte Luxe All Over Face Blush Color in the shade Rosy Posy. So hopefully this will come through for us. Again, it has the brush on the one side and then it has the blush stick on the other. And hopefully this will be really pretty. Oh, that was a lot. Hopefully it blends out. All right, I'm already saying that this brush is not giving. It's like super dry and it's not moving the product like at all. So I'm gonna use um, a sponge. I feel like the sponge made the product disappear. I'm confused. I feel like the shade is almost kind of like the shade that just my normal cheeks are in a way, which may or may not be a good thing. I feel like anytime I do one of these like full face of first impressions, it never goes well, like, ever. Like, I think the, if you don't have red cheeks like I do, I think the shade would be pretty. But since I do have, like, red cheeks, I feel like it just kind of, like, blends into what my cheeks look like already. I will say, though, that the brush on this is not giving. It doesn't do anything. Um, definitely not, like, the Makeup by Mario brush that's included with that stick. That one actually, like, blends out the product really well, and I enjoy using it. Um... Yeah, the makeup is looking like discombobulated and like not going together very smoothly. So might as well set it together with some powder. And while this isn't a new product, it's new to me. This is the Lola Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. I have not used this ever in my entire life. I know, crazy. So we are gonna try it today and hopefully it will be my saving grace. All right, first we're gonna set the under eyes. And I'm just hoping this isn't gonna like oxidize and make my under eyes look super dark. I'm trying to like tell if it actually like oxidized or not. Don't think it's a, like a good under eye brightening powder, um, but I'm pretty sure this will be good for like all over the face. Cause I feel like it made my under eyes look darker. 
So yeah, my under eyes definitely look darker, but they do look smooth. So I don't think I'm going to use this as an under eye setting powder, but I can use it as an all over face powder, which is what I'm going to do right now. Okay, looking at the face now that's all set, I do like it as a setting powder for all over the face. My face doesn't look super dry, but everything is set in and it looks smooth. The under eyes did, I feel like, oxidize and get a little bit darker, but it's not anything like too crazy. It's not like they all suddenly like oxidize to complete orange or like five shades too dark, which I have had happen before. So I think I won't use it as for the under eyes. I'll use a different like kind of more brightening powder and then use the Laura Mercier all over the rest of the face. So I'm going to go ahead and do my brows. I don't have any new brow products. I'm going to use some from Billion Dollar Brows. I have the Brow Boost Activation, which is like a brow primer. No idea what that does. And then I have the Billion Dollar Brows Brows on Point Pencil and then their Brow Gel. So I'm going to do that really quickly and then we can get into the eyeshadow. Okay, I'm back and the brows are filled. And now we're going to go into some eyeshadow. So it's time to bring out the Retro Glam Palette. I think this retailed for like $69. Is that how much it retails for? I don't know. But this is what she looks like. She has this beautiful, cool tone pinks and greens. I'm just really attracted to this color story, so that's why I decided to pick it up. Um, I also have the mini retro palette that I had like from forever ago, or I got it in some sort of box. So that's what that looks like. It is different. There are different shades, but obviously they go together perfectly. And I'm wearing like pinks and greens, so I want to try to like incorporate both shades. Not really sure exactly how, but we will figure that out. Of course, we have the mirror up here with the frosted thing, so you know it's time to peel that off and get that satisfying feeling. The best. Every time I go to start a new eyeshadow look, and I know I'm gonna be using a bunch of colors and a bunch of brushes, and I look at my brushes and I'm like, I don't have the brushes I need. Where the heck are they? Yeah, they all need to be washed. Hi, it's me. I'm the problem. Anywho, I want to go kind of for like a sultry but feminine kind of look today. And so I want to use like as many colors from this as possible. I want to start with like a smoky wing. And I'm going to start with the shade Evergreen right there with an angled brush. Please don't drop that. Thank you. And we're just going to make a cute little wing. This isn't really like a thin brush. so Hopefully this won't turn out horrible. So far the shade is coming off like a little bit like lighter than it looks in the pan. It looks like a really dark forest green, but so far coming onto the eye, it looks kind of more like emerald, which is really pretty, but not what I thought it was going to be. So that's interesting. Wow, that is a pretty shade. I'm going in very lightly with it, but it is so pretty. So I swatched like the green shimmers in the palette. So this one is Paladien. I guess this one is Marlin, then we have Oz, then we have Jazzy, and then that one is Maxi. So I want to go over that green with a shimmer, and I think I want it to be a little bit darker. I think I'm going to go over it with a little bit of the Jazzy shade just to make it a little bit darker for an eyeliner, but like I don't want to go too crazy. So we're just going to dip in very lightly. I can't really tell if I did anything. It might have darkened it up a little bit. So like I said, I got my hair done last night and it was the first time I've actually had my hair cut for like a curly hair style. Um, it's a very specific way of cutting your hair and it just involves like dry cutting your hair and then you just kind of like see where your curl clumps are and your clusters and then you just cut the curls themselves and then you can create layers and it's just designed to work better for your curly hair like nothing against my old hairstylist, like I loved her, but she didn't know how to like cut hair. When you go to cosmetology school, according to my new hairstylist, they had like one mannequin that had curly hair and they give you like one eight hour class on how to cut curly hair and that's it. And like 60% of the population has some sort of texture or curl to their hair. So I don't know why they don't teach it more often than they do. All right, now I'm gonna take the shade Oz and kind of do that in like the crease. So my hairstylist said she like spent like five to six thousand dollars of her own money to go down to New York City 
just so she could get trained in how to cut curly hair because she also obviously has curly hair and we both have had our experiences of horrible, horrible haircuts. And so she just wants to make sure that she can do curly hair justice and give it the cut that it needs. And I love it. It was amazing. The whole experience was great and she really took her time and she educated me on everything and it was just overall an amazing experience. All right, now I'm gonna take the shade Maxi, that one right there, and I'm gonna deepen that up a little bit. Ooh, I'm just loving how these colors are working together. Like it's already, it's already coming together. It's so cute. Um, I'm also adding like the shades on, like in a very interesting way that I normally don't do. I'm just having fun. I'm just playing with makeup today and I haven't really like sat down like actually like, played with makeup and just, you know, didn't have an agenda really. So I'm really happy that I was able to like get in and get my hair cut by her. She was amazing and her books were like kind of busy. Obviously she's so popular and there aren't really many curly hair specialists around here that actually know how to cut her hair. And like it's literally the curliest my hair has ever been. Um, it's not going to look like this every day because to style curly hair to get that look just takes way too much time. So on the day to day, it's definitely not going to look like that. But for special occasions, date night, my wedding, it's going to be amazing. Now I'm going to start off with the shade Holly, which is this pink. And I'm going to put that like on the lid in between here and then maybe like fringe like closer to the center. All right, so we're going to start with the fringe, which is that like light green shade. And that's gonna go on the lid towards the inner corner. That is so pretty. I'm loving these shades. I don't know, some people said like they didn't like this and some of the reviews were kind of like iffy, but it just depends if like this is your color scheme or not. I just like how it's like kind of grungy and it can be like feminine. It can be, you know, like all the greens. You could do all the pinks. There's just a mixture and you can just kind of create I kind of just want it to have like a nice smooth but like shimmery eye all over but like looking kind of sultry at the same time. I don't like this shirt that I'm wearing though is giving like very like flirty floral fun which is not what this eyeshadow look is giving but it's okay. Now we're gonna go into the pink holly shade. We'll see how this one looks first um, and if not we can go into the shade Belle which is a little bit deeper. We might do that on the outer corner. I just want to see how this pink holds up. Oh, whoa, there it is. Wow. I didn't think it was actually going to like have that much payoff. Natasha Denona shades are just so amazing. I probably should have like done the application of this in a different way. But this is what we're doing. So that's Belle versus Holly. I think I'm actually going to go in and use the Belle on the outer portion just so we get more of the pink color. Ooh. Oh my gosh. I'm loving how this is turning out. I had no plan when I went into this of like what I was going to do. Oh my gosh. This is so pretty. I just wish I had more eye space. I always say this, like if I could get like a couple more, just a couple more centimeters, I could fit in so much more and do like a lot more cool looks. Okay. So up here on the brow bone, and the inner corner, we're gonna go in with the Pal Paladian shade right here, which is like the really bright green shimmer. Oh my goodness gracious, that is pretty. Is it, can you see, can you see that? I don't know if you can see it, it's amazing. Oh, and other news, I just got my uh, message from Duolingo. I am trying to teach myself some German and it's been very interesting in how they like teach it to you. Like it's kind of like in the practical way of teaching of stuff that you might need if you find yourself in Germany, like how to order stuff at a cafe, how to introduce yourself, say where you're from, animals, people, places, stuff like that. So it's been really fun. And plus I'm German. So like, I don't know, one day it'd be cool if I could speak fluent German. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but there's some words I just can't pronounce. Like they are R's. It's not like a Spanish R. It's not like a R. It's not a rolling and it's not like the R. It's like somewhere in between. Like you just have a little, a little tickle. It's like R, R, R. I don't know. Like gross, gross, which is supposed to be big or tall. Gross. I don't know. There's some words, it's just really hard, really hard to try to figure out how to actually pronounce that. All right, taking that same shade into the inner corner. And I just love Natasha Denona shades because 
you can use them with a brush and they work out pretty well. I'm loving this. And the thing is like with pink and green, kind of like across the color wheel-ish, it's not really turning muddy. At least I don't think so. I think it's really, really pretty. All right, we're gonna take the shade Flutter and I'm gonna use my finger for this as long as it's clean. And that's gonna go smack dab right in the middle of the lid. The Flutter shade is not as soft as the other shimmers. It feels like more like glittery. So there is that. Does Flutter have green reflect in it too? I thought it was pink, but I'm loving it. Wow, whoa. It is like green. Like there's some pink and like champagne in it, but it, it is like green. You're definitely not gonna be able to like see this on the camera. Oh, I've already gotten the mirror dirty, great. That's what Flutter looks like, swatch. I mean, just look at this hand of beautiful shimmers. It's amazing. I could have gone into this one, I guess, into like the Retro Glam palette and like used one of these shimmers. I don't even know if I've ever used this palette because it doesn't look like it's even swatched. Oh yeah, like this shade. This shade would have been cute. You know, why not? We'll just add a little bit on that. We are just layering on the eyeshadow today and I could care less. Oh my goodness, this is so pretty. And it's giving me like that wet eyeshadow look that like I'm going for. I think I wanna go in with this shade on the bottom. I think that's what I wanna do. Cause I don't see any mattes like in the big palette that I wanna use on the bottom. So we're gonna start with this one. The shade 60s from the mini retro palette. Oh yeah, that's the shade that I want. This one is definitely more of a cool tone, like grungy forest green, I guess. I might put some more shimmer on it as well. All right, so the Marlin shade on the lower lash line to give some more shimmer and just like lighten it up a little bit because I think it was looking like a little dark. First impressions of this palette, I love it. I love this look. I think it's fun. It's different. I haven't done anything like this. Oh, it's so cute. I love it. Okay, I gotta curl my lashes and then I'm gonna use the Patrick's, not Patrick Star, Pat McGrath Labs Dark Star Mascara. I have this little mini. I have not reviewed this on camera, I don't think, but I have used this before, maybe like once. Um, so let me curl my lashes really quick. All right, here's what one eye looks like with mascara, one without. Again, I don't know if you can tell because my lashes never stay curled, but it's cute. I don't think it's my top like three favorite. Like I think my top ones is still like the Vicious Mascara from Nabla, the Ilia Mascara. Maybe this one could be third or fourth. I don't know. I don't know what my third one is right now, but it's cute. I don't know if it's like my favorite, but it's up there. It's up there, definitely. Um, highlighter, I really don't have any new highlighters, so I do have this like trial size of Becca Ignite liquid highlighters in the shades Passion, Creativity, and Strength. I'm guessing Passion is going to be the lightest shade, so we're going to go ahead and use that. I'm going to zoom you guys out a little bit. Okay, I feel like we were like too close for too long. Um, so this is liquid highlighter. Hopefully it doesn't destroy my makeup. That's a lot. I feel like this would be good for like your chest. Can you see it? It's giving like what? It's giving what? I don't know. I have a little bit on my fingers, so I think we're just gonna do just a tap tap. Oh my god, that smells so good. That smells so good. It smells like I just got out of the shower. Oh, it went a little crazy. It kind of got all over the place. Um, holy cow, that smells amazing. I love that scent. It might irritate some people, so just be aware of that. I don't even know if this exists because I don't know if Becca exists anymore or not. Um, it smells amazing though. I don't know like what. It literally smells like I got out of the shower and also kind of smells like, um, baby powder. <laughs> Let me see what this says. It says, fragrance of juicy pineapple, coconut, orange flower notes. I don't get any of that, I don't think. This is definitely cute though. You could put it like all over your chest for that summer glow, which we are not doing right now because it is winter. Um, but yeah, no, no, it's cute. It's simple. I like it. I don't know if it exists anymore because it was just a trial size. 
but we need lipstick. All right, I can't really find a lipstick in the shade that I want that's new. So I'm going out with the Valentino Rosso Valentino lipstick in the shade 100R, I believe, which is just a pretty pink. I think it's just a little bit lighter than like my actual lips, so it's it's perfect. All right, and then I'm just gonna try the Beauty Crop Clear Gloss. That looks super cool. It just like created a bunch of bubbles. It looks like a little lava lamp. I don't really smell anything, so. All right, there was a clear gloss, nothing to say. It is clear. It's not sticky and it actually feels like kind of hydrating. So there's that. I always gotta clean off the brush after cause it gets like all the lipstick product on it. And I don't wanna put it back into the clear gloss with all of that on there. All right, this is the completed look. I think the voluminous hair is given something for like the eyes to work with. I love how that looks together. But let's just run down everything really quickly and give you guys my final opinions. So starting with the primer from RMS, it's okay. Gives you a little bit of radiance, a little bit of blurring, and it's a little bit tacky so your foundation will stick to it. But I don't think it was life changing. My foundation wasn't new, but I don't think my Tom Ford foundation is holding up over time. It's like really watery, so I think it leads to separating easier and will lead to like a shorter shelf life, which is unfortunate. I definitely don't think I'd ever recommend spending like $140, $150 on it. Thankfully, it was set to me for free, so when it does expire, I can just throw it away and not feel bad about it. Well, maybe just a little bit because it's so pretty. I might just leave it for like display. I don't know. Um, let's see. So then going in with the LYS, I might see if I can return this because it's just not my shade. It blended so perfectly and I think it like worked at the, towards the end. Um, but it just, I don't think it was my shade. It's too yellow and it's definitely not like the makeup by Mario one. So I might look to see if there's a different shade, but I don't know about that one. The blush, again, it's nude sticks. Um, nude sticks tends to be like a more laid back, not like bold makeup brand, I think. I don't know if they're Asian based or not. So if you have like just plain skin and don't have red cheeks like me, I think it will work out. It does work with my cheeks though because it kind of evens out my tone of my cheeks already. Um, I just don't like the brush that's included on it on the other side. It did absolutely nothing. The setting powder from Laura Mercier obviously is a cult classic for a reason. I think it's great at setting my whole face and not looking super cakey or dry but looking smooth. I just don't think I would prefer to use it for under the eyes. It's okay, it did darken it a little bit but I just think I would use a different product for the under eyes. And then going into the eyeshadow, I absolutely love this palette. I'm really happy that I picked it up. I know it's not everyone's color story, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but the fact that I have like the mini and the big one now makes me super, super happy. Of course, Natasha Dono shades are amazing. The quality is just superb and I really love how this turned out. You can do a full green look, you can do a more pink look. I just, there's so many different things you could do with it and I really do like it. I think I'm gonna use it a lot in the spring. Like I feel like this outfit with this palette is gonna be so cute together. Um, the highlighter, just, it's kind of a glowy highlighter. I don't think I'd ever actually buy it, but I had a little sample size that I wanted to use up. And then the Beauty Crop Clear Gloss. It's a clear gloss. Um, it's not sticky at all and it does feel hydrating. And it's not really disturbing the lipstick underneath. So there's that. Well, that's everything for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. While you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you are notified every time I post a new video. I love you guys. If you subscribe to my channel, I welcome you and I feel like family. Bye!